Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unsettling Dramaturgy's fourth Praxis session for virtual collaboration. In this four-part series, we address approaches to and practices in online convening that center unsettling, decolonization, indigenization, and disability justice in process design. The series emerges from our year plus of work and research in transnational convening and creative collaboration through virtual mediums. The series is being, it has been developed as our response to turn toward online organizing that has followed the COVID-19 crisis. Today's session is on irreconcilable spaces. Before we jump in, we want to flag that we're starting our sessions with introductions and a check-in with each unsettling dramaturgy collaborator. We want honor that this time is what cultivates the intimacy and vulnerability that shapes what's possible in our discussions on the theme for the rest of the session. But we also want to honor your time as an audience and recognize that the digital fatigue many of us are facing um, is very real. And we want to be transparent that we'll finish this introduction set in approximately 45 minutes. So if you'd like to leave and return at any time, please feel free to do so. Check. This is Jessica. Unsettling Dramaturgy is an ongoing project bringing together Crip and Indigenous dramaturgs from across so-called Canada and the United States who work in theater, dance, and experimental performance. Using digital platforms, we gather to build relationships to explore and document the critical convergences and divergences in our experiences and work to amplify Crip and Indigenous aesthetics, ethics, practices, and leadership in our local, national, and international performance ecologies, to push the conversations from inclusion to centering, from reconciliation to unsettling and decolonization. For a full description of our project, you can check out our Facebook page, Unsettling Dramaturgy, Crip and Indigenous Dramaturgies. This project is generously supported by the Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of the Americas Bly Creative Capacity Grant and the Canada Council for the Arts. You'd shout out to our partner HowlRound, which is live streaming today's event for us. We wanna recognize that Zoom, the platform that we're using to come together today, is headquartered in what is now called San Jose, California on the traditional lands of the Olone and Tamian peoples. Check. This is Tara. So today's plan for our session is number one, following our opening, Unsettling Dramaturgy Creative Collaborators will engage in exchange on the theme. We will speak from our respective embodied knowledges and practices with an orientation towards expanding collective practice as is relevant to local ecologies. We will then take a 10 minute break on the hour. We will take 10 minute breaks on all of the hours. Um, so we will announce those when they come. Uh, secondly, Jill will lead creative collaborators in turn uh, and those tuning in live through elements of the process developed for encounters at the edge of the woods, activating the discussion of irrecon irreconcilable spaces through embodied creative practice. Um, thirdly, we are excited to have Tara. Oh my gosh, you know, Quarantine, can't even brain. <laughs> Tarari, uh, junk, if I said your name wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, yes, they are waiting. Uh, Tarari will be dil dil digitally, virtually recording this event for us. Oh my gosh. At various moments during this event, Tarari will share the, the visual record they are creating, and this will be visually described. Um, finally, number four is exchanging with you all who are watching from home. We are excited to interact with you, dear viewers, throughout the session, to hear your questions and your reflections, to interact with us during this event. You can use one of three options. You can email us at unsettlingdramaturgy at gmail.com. You can comment on the live stream on the Unsettling Dramaturgy Facebook page. Um, and then our Unsettling Dramaturgy co-coordinator, me, uh, will be checking these accounts throughout the session. You can also email us your stories that are inspired by this process now and at any time. Um, and then finally, we will engage in a group closing. So what we do is learning of how we do it. The process is the work. Check. This is Lindsay again. 
Um, I'm going to talk a bit about accessibility. So today's session is being live captioned and ASL interpreted. CART or live captioning is available on the HowlRound live stream and here https colon backslash backslash recapd dot com backslash w middle slash b f capital d capital p l b thank you um, and ASL interpretation is available on both the Facebook and the HowlRound live streams. ASL interpretation and CART are essential elements of how we've built this environment. We want to acknowledge that both deaf folks and interpreters have to work extra hard together to ensure clarity and communication that some people who use spoken English may take for granted. So we thank you for that extra labor. ASL and CART are vital and indispensable access practices and they require input from deaf folks to do well. They're also complex and complicated in navigating our online forums, which points to the limits of the programs and the systems we're using that don't consider or make space for accessibility across a multiplicity of practices and needs. And it also points to our CRIP commitment to working within and challenging imperfect systems in order to honor the value that comes from cross-disability solidarity work and community building. Visual description is also embedded in our practice. We're gonna remain in an emergent and responsive state throughout today's event, adjusting our pace and the shape of our conversations to reflect the pace and shape of all collaborators. We'll name our access needs at the top of the event and again as they arise throughout our time together. We also wanna acknowledge that trauma is in the quote unquote room in doing this, we want to acknowledge that all of us have established practices of care for ourselves, and we want to honor and include those practices. It, this includes the practices that have been pathologized, but have done important work. We invite everyone here in terms of the collaborators and anyone tuning in live to take care of yourself in whatever way is necessary. Everyone's welcome to vocalize, to use technology, to stem, to move around, to leave and to return to the event at any time. Also learning from disabled artists and organizers of, of the festival, I wanna be with you everywhere in New York. We wanna acknowledge those that, who can't be here and who could never be here because of inaccessible and inequitable structures and the ways that these realities bump up against our embodied needs and experiences. You are welcome and appreciated and an important part of our community. And a recording of this event will be available for future viewing through the Unsettling Dramaturgy Facebook page and on the HowlRound website. Check. This is Jessica. Uh, and we'll now start with our check-ins. Uh, so during these, we'll be um, stating our name, uh, pronouns, if applicable, land acknowledgments, a physical description, how we are, our access needs, and uh, an introduction to some aspect or your work or practice. Um, we invite folks to please endeavor towards brevity as appropriate. And uh, we'd like to encourage the folks with us in the audience to share their own land acknowledgements via text, email, voice message, or comment on the live stream. Um, I will go ahead and go since I'm unmuted. Uh, Tanche, my name is Jessica Schacht. I'm Métis Canadian living as an uninvited guest on the traditional territory of the Cowtown Nation, also known as Duncan, BC, uh, which is part of the Hulkaminam Treaty Group, currently in stage five treaty negotiations. I'm very so, thankful. Jessica, could we ask you to slow down a bit? It's way too fast when you're reading. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, you're on the territory of the Hoki, sorry, nation? Oh, uh, the, the, Cowtown, the Cowtown Nation. Um, and it's part of the Hokaminam Treaty Group, uh, which is currently in stage five treaty negotiations. Uh, very grateful and thankful to live here. Uh, the Cowichan, also known as the Warm Lands, um, never far from the river, which is a very um, grounding place to be in this time. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and um, my physical description uh, I have tan skin, uh, I have dark brown eyes and dark brown hair. I'm wearing large gold rimmed glasses uh, and a white uh, linen shirt with a v-neck. 
Um, I am in my living room, which is a blue room with pink around. Um, I'm doing well, all things considered. Um, it's been a long week, but I have had lots of creative fulfillment, which I am grateful for. Um, my access needs are that I have a tiny baby in front of me, so you may see me making funny faces uh, to entertain said child, um, and I may need to attend to their needs throughout, so my camera might go off um, as I tend to the human who is reliant on me. Um, I work uh, primarily uh, as a dramaturg on new and Indigenous work, um, and I'm very interested in how um, we can uh, break through uh, colonial practices and um, get outside of what what the systems that we are taught to work within uh, to measure our own success with our own metrics to indigenize our work. Check. This is Tara, I'll go next. He's Jay. My name is Tara Moses. I am a citizen of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, as well as of Muskogee descent. I am calling in from Osage, Muskogee, and Cherokee nations. This land is also the site of the 1921 massacre of the burning of Black Wall Street, also known as Tulsa, Oklahoma. My pronouns are she, her, hers. My physical description, I have light brown skin, very long, very dark hair, almost blue black today. I have bright red lipstick on, a black sweater, and I'm sitting on a blue couch. Um, and then there is art behind me and you can see a small corner of a blue and purple watercolor buffalo um, that I did a few years ago that my partner likes to say is floating through the clouds. Um, how I am, we got off to a rough start, <laughs> but um, I'm feeling more energized, more creative. I'm very excited for this conversation and to hear from so many of the brilliant minds in our, in our digital room today. Um, as regard, in regards to access needs, all of mine are currently being met. However, within the next 30 minutes to one hour, I will have to turn off my camera briefly to let workers into my apartment during this pandemic, as there is holes in my ceiling linking the rainwater right now. Oh. So, <laughs> other than that, we're great. Um, introduction to my work, I am, in addition to dramaturging predominantly Indigenous stories, I am also a director, a playwright, and an artistic director of an organization specifically dedicated to Latino and Native artists and their stories. Um, check. I can jump in next. This is Lindsay Eels. Um, I use the pronouns she and her, and they and them are great as well. I'm here as a settler calling from Imiskewetsiwaskeakan, which is a traditional gathering place of the Blackfoot, Cree, Papas Chase, Dene, Iroquois, Inuit, Nakota Sioux, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, and Métis nations and it's colonially called Edmonton. Um, I'm really grateful for the budding plants that are starting to grow outside of my home. Um, and I have a pale round face with freckles and bright red curly hair. I'm wearing black cat eye glasses with sparkles on them. I've got a black shirt on with some constellations on it and another hoodie. I am in my bed with pillows behind me and there's a painting uh, or a picture behind me, a big picture of two trees coming together with the sun peeking out between them. Um, I'm feeling smushy brained and um, that's okay. Um, yeah, time feels a bit strange for me right now and it's long and short in, in unpredictable measures. Um, so I'm just, yeah, feeling into that and um, glad to be with everyone on this call today. 
and I'm finding an interesting relationship between like showing up somewhere and not showing up somewhere and what it feels like to be with the folks when I do show up. So thank you for being people I can show up with. Um, my access means I probably just need to move around a bit at some point. Um, and I think what, what we're gonna facilitate for the day makes a lot of space for that. So that's wonderful. And I would say briefly my work and practice is in the area of MAD um, performance where MAD is a social and a political orientation to mental illness, quote unquote mental illness. And also in relation to disability performance and um, integrated dance practice. And thank you for all sharing space with me today. And also to the folks who are witnessing, um, yeah, as audience. Check. Um, I guess I'll go next. Hi, I'm Andrea Kovic. Um, she, her pronouns, and I'm calling in from the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish people, including the Duwamish, Suquamish, and Muckleshoot nations. Specifically, I'm situated on the lands of the first people of Seattle the Duwamish, past and present. I live and work as an uninvited settler on land stolen from the Duwamish in the Treaty of Point Elliot in 1885. And I honor with gratitude the land and the Duwamish tribe. Um, physical distress. Description. I have light skin and shoulder length brown hair with scraggly side swept wings and glasses. You're probably, there's a white wall behind me and a messy bookcase. Um, how I'm doing, I'm not feeling the greatest today, but that's crip life, I guess. So, um, and I know that everyone understands that. So I'm in a space of understanding and I appreciate that. Um, my access needs, I, like to mention that I will exercise my right to be remain silent. I don't always feel that you need to vocally contribute to participate. So I appreciate that understanding. And um, for my dramaturgical work, I combine themes of accessibility and representation of disabled and deaf artists and looking at what it means to have authentic voices centered. And that can look like um, a play reading festival or reading scripts or um, straight up dramaturgy and that's my work. So check. Hi everybody, it's Carmen. Um, I'm my my pronouns are he, him, his. 
um, I'm speaking to you uh, from the um, unceded and occupied territories of the Squamish, um, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam people. Um, I'm talking from my less than two-year-old's bedroom. Um, we're sharing space right now, and uh, this is where I could set up. Um, I'm sitting on a chair that I inherited from my um, my nono and my nona. Um, it's a crushed velvet sort of material, old wooden antique chair. Um, uh, I'm my first uh, description. I'm um, wearing a, a dark leather flat cap. I have these big headphones on. Um, I have like olive skin, a dark beard, um, hazel eyes. Um, wearing like a brown collared shirt and a uh, beige sweater and uh, dark brown, uh, blue pants. Um, it's hard, <laughs> how I'm feeling. So like before I logged on today, I started having a pain flare up, um, which, you know, often puts me out for a few days. Um, I'm just kind of gauging how I'm feeling right now. And I feel comfortable sharing this with you all because um, I feel like in a supportive environment right now. I know there's an audience as well, but um, yeah, I feel like I'm among friends and folks that I often share about how I'm feeling with. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna gauge how I'm doing and respond accordingly. I have my Jade heating pad set up on my daughter's bed. So I, I might just like slink away to there um, eventually or at, right after I talk. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and I, and I might have to leave too. Uh, my work is uh, about accessibility. I'm an interdisciplinary artist. I'm usually responding to the conditions of my own access. I describe myself as a non-visual artist. Um, because I use my non-visual senses as a primary way of navigating my surroundings. Um, at a point in time, I shifted value from the visual to the non-visual. So I really try to find ways to exercise my non-visual senses and make opportunity uh, opportunities for others to also practice using their non-visual senses. I don't often like share publicly about my pain condition and I think in Unsettling Dramaturgy is one of the few places that I have done that. Um, and it's an experience that I've, I've had since I was a kid, it puts me in hospital quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to feel through <laughs> how it feels to, uh, to share about that condition with you today and how I'm feeling uh, with you today too. So uh, thanks for uh, being here and making, making that space for us, uh, check. This is Grant Miller, uh, they, them. Hello, everyone. Um, I am calling in from the traditional and unceded territory of the Chinook, Multnomah, Clackamas, Kathlamet, and Kalapuya people, as well as many other unnamed bands. Uh, that is the settler territory referred to as Portland, Oregon, USA. Um, acknowledgements as well to the nearby confederated tribes of the Grand Ronde, whose ancestors survived the Oregon Trail of Tears and tribal status was terminated by executive order in 1954 and restored with a lot of activism in 1983. Um, let me go back to... Um, I am currently floating over a virtual background of sort of uh, uh, kind of speckled white and green oval leaves in a very um, sort of quick uh, paste image. Um, it's a still image uh, color, sort of like bluish green, but the, all the leaves sort of move sort of fast when I look at them. Um, and I 
I'm further away from my computer, so I'm kind of small uh, amongst these leaves, wearing Princess Leia silver headphones over my ears. Um, I have, um, right now my hair looks really pretty dark, uh, but it's a lot more gray than it appears right now. Um, I'm white with, um, uh, let's see, a, a sort of maroon um, button up shirt and a striped t-shirt under it. Um, I have sort of a tired look on my face, um, which I suppose kind of speaks to <laughs> how I'm doing as well. Um, it's funny to describe myself while also looking at an image of myself, because uh, I kind of, there's some things I know to describe about myself, but as I'm using the image as a reference, um, <laughs> it's just interesting to kind of notice. Um, I also have um, uh, hands that drape like willow trees, and um, yeah, I think that that's the last thing I want to add. Um, I am really glad to be here. I um, my attention is a little bit split um, because I have been um, invited to participate in a a project. Um, that has kind of a, a, a deadline that, or, or sort of like a things need to be done by, um, or like major thrust of it needs to be done by the end of June and it would need to happen pretty quickly. And so my mind, I'm really grateful for this opportunity, but part of the reason that it it's come my way is because a, a really prominent member of our community passed away right before COVID. Um, and so there's a need for this, this opportunity to occur. Um, and so I'm just, I'm, I, I'm still kind of reeling from just sort of the sudden work opportunity in this time. Um, and it's work specifically related to disability and the arts, um, disability culture, uh, disability justice. So, sort of the form of it is is still kind of very much on my mind. And so my, my attention is a little bit, I'm tired because I spent a lot of last night thinking about it and kind of grieving the loss of this community member and the state of the world right now. So I'm, I'm kind of tired, but I, I also, uh, I'm also really glad to be here. I'm, I'm particularly excited for what you're gonna do with us today, Jill, and um, just to, to be present with all of you uh, it's very, very, very soothing to my heart. Um, I'm also, I also keep getting a notice that my internet connection is unstable. Um, so just going to work with that, whatever that means. Um, I think I might also sort of recline and lean back a little bit. Um, and I've, I've taken some, some pain stuff and I might continue to take pain stuff throughout this. So that might have impacts on my um, my use of words. Um, and usually that just means I still try to talk, but it gets a little it gets a little fuzzy. Um, in which case, please ask me to clarify myself. Um, and uh, I'm also going to be drawing, so I might be looking down and if it looks like I'm not attentive, um, I probably am. Uh, drawing also helps me kind of stay connected. Um, anything else that I really want to throw in right now? Um, yeah, I just, I really, I love being with all of you. Um, oh, right, introduction to my work or practice. Um, so a big part of my practice is um, adapting to shifting circumstances. Um, so um, in this moment, uh, I, my feet are kind of sore on the ground, so I'm going to kind of pump them a little bit uh, to get the blood flowing. Um, my work is situated uh, within theater, performance art, movement, um, and social practice. Um, and I am a, um, I, I'm also a, uh, I also do like 
consulting work around access, um, particularly with arts institutions, but also cultural institutions or institutions that have some sort of direct uh, role in, in producing or engaging culture. Um, and that is with the curiosity paradox. Uh, my partner is also a consultant as well, particularly to do with language. Their name is Jonathan Paradox. Um, and um, yeah, I, I suppose um, my practices uh, uh, brings up a lot of questions about what, what is, um, how to deform existing structures to make space for our bodies to be present. Um, and so that can look a lot of ways. Um, in our last session, that looked like a, a practice um, that I developed uh, in collaboration with um, uh, my partner, Jonathan, two other collaborators, and um, uh, Dare Sohe, Larissa Call, and that our, our practice uh, was really about interrupting performance structure to folk and, and meeting culture to really focus on practices of collective care, negotiating how we want to be witnessed and access, um, and then uh, engaging reflective practices. Um, and that's one of uh, many ways that I work to and move to, I, I'm, I'm kind of averse to using the word work, um, that I move to uh, deform existing structures. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I also want to name an, another access need. Um, I have a tendency to talk fast. And so um, if anybody, including interpreters, um, are willing to interrupt me, I would really appreciate it. Because um, right now I'm drinking tea and it's warm and it's reminding me to move slowly. Um, but uh, I also really welcome the interruption to slow down um, because I'm going to finish this tea soon. Um, so thank you. Check. So it looks like right, this is Lindsay. It looks like right now we have yet here to hear from Mia and Jill and Landon. So if Landon any... and I are just communicating privately in chat. I was just catching Landon up on what we are doing and sharing the questions that we are asking and yeah. answering. Yeah. Jill, do you feel like in a place to jump in or? I think um, Jill had requested to go last. Right. So Landon and I, one of us, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I can um, go if you want. Sorry. Oh, and sorry also, yes. Um, and I, I can just go, uh, because I'm talking. Uh so this is Mia Amir. I'm calling in from the unceded and occupied territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples, where I have lived most of my life. I am a Crip mad Jew of mixed Ashkenazi and Sephardic ascent, and I was born in Israel occupied Palestine. I use she, her, hers as my pronouns. I am currently sitting in my bedroom on my bed with a tapestry of uh, a tr the tree of life behind me that um, is textured and has the colors uh, brown, various shades of brown, orange, blue, green. Um, I have a wedge pillow behind me. I am uh, wearing a blue shirt uh, with a green head uh, band on. I have dark hair, light skin, um, hazel eyes, um, a tired face, um, I think that's what needs to be shared right now. Um, I'm lucky to be 
uh, sheltering in place in my home, which is a safe place for me. And that feels good. Um, I am feeling very, very dispersed right now because our dear um, co-coordinator, my dear co-coordinator of this project is sick, uh, Rue. And so I'm holding down various aspects of our digital um, world right now as we're live. So I'm attending to our email and to the Facebook live stream and trying to keep us uh, connected in a good way with anyone who has questions or is trying to tune in live um, and to contribute any reflections that they might have. So I, my, my, my attention is in multiple places um, and I feel my heart beating very quickly. I feel uh, my body's like nervous uh, and anxious and it probably doesn't help that I'm drinking coffee. Um, my access needs are mostly met right now. Um, I tend to live with a general state of uh, brain fog due to my chronic illnesses. I am also the parent of a 15 week old baby. So that all um, creates a perfect um, opportunity for my brain to find uh, multiple ways to be in present time and also to take care of itself, which means Sometimes I'm not able to perform language in the ways that I want and feel the need to. So I appreciate any patience with me as I try to cobble together sentences. Um, other than that, I'm good. Um, in terms of my practice, I uh, say that I work at the intersection of creative and community practice. Um, in, in real time, what that means is that I am a creator who uh, is working in transdisciplinary media. I'm a sound designer, a performer, a writer, a dramaturg, a director, uh, working in theater and in um, transgressive experimental performance. Um, I work from a disability crip mad aesthetic and that is not something that con um, conforms to a, a box that you can place a real definition inside of. To me, it's, that's really about um, questions of uh, design of process and the ways in which we relate to place, uh, space, relationships, uh, the, those who are in the room, the proverbial room with us, those who are not in the room with us, the ways in which we allow our embodiments, our histories, our emergent and constantly fluctuating truths to inform and be welcome and part of the ways in which we come together to um, create work, but also to perform and, um, and, and design uh, possibilities for imagining outside of the current conditions in which we exist. Um, I uh, work largely from um, sensation in my practice, even if uh, my practice is sometimes largely language-based or sometimes largely image-based or sometimes largely sound-based. Um, sensation is always at the root and I'm um, always looking for ways uh, to allow the body to take the lead because I find that that is where the greatest truths in my life live. Um, the way the body is uh, in a constant state of interrelationship and interrogating that feels really important to me. Um, I also do a lot of work inside of my communities to advocate for um, more just and humane ways of working, which for me are grounded in a crip mad uh, experience, but are intersecting with uh, class and racial justice, um, the ways in which we live in an ongoing state of colonization. Um, so seeing all of these things as interrelated. Um, and I'm very, very lucky to be the convener and co-coordinator of this project, Unsettling Dramaturgy, which brings together these incredible humans from across so-called Canada and the United States to, um, to be together and to find uh, intersections and divergences in our work that are really uh, important. And I think pushing, pushing our communities to find new ways of working and making and being. Check.
Thank you, uh, everyone, for your introductions. While you may have seen me, my body disappearing off screen, I was just, um, I could still hear you. I just wasn't in camera range. So um, my name is Tiare Jung. Um, my pronouns are they, them, or in Hawaiian, which is one of my lineages, um, you could describe my gender as mahu, which is like a fluid or in between genders. Um, and, um, I am living on the occupied homelands of the Musqueam, the Tsleil-Waututh, the Squamish, um, and yeah, that was three of them, uh, peoples. I've been an uninvited guest on these lands for the past 10 or 11 years. And um, something that I feel um, something about my relationship to these lands is I have had the immense like privilege and honor of um, being able to witness and draw for um, a number of Indigenous groups and organizations. And through that, I got to meet, and also through some other community connections, I got to meet the really generous Michelle Lorna Nahani. Um, so she is a Squamish, um, uh, uh, Squamish, What's the word for, I'm just forgetting that word. Not mother, but person in a position of like leadership, matriarch, matriarch. Thank you. I can see Mia leaning in to help me out in my little brain fart there. Um, so she's a Squamish matriarch and she has just released a workbook called Decolonize Now. Um, and I just think that she um, does really wonderful work to invite people to think about their relationship to the land and their relationship to um, indigenization and decolonization. And so plugging that, check that out, Decolonize Now, um, Michelle Nahani. And um, how, am I, how am I doing today? My access needs are met. And I apologize for the background noise. I was going to have my Bluetooth headphones in this setup. Um, I wanted to set up outside for all of you so that you could have better lighting on this board. And so it was a bit of an experimentation. There's bungee cords and concrete blocks holding everything in place there. And my headphones just stopped working right before the call. So I hope that it's not too chaotic over here. Um, um, what do I want to say about this? Just give me one second. Yeah, so graphic recording, um, the practice of listening, witnessing, and reflecting back the work all of you are doing is, um, I really hope together, I really hope to pull together some of the essences and illustrate the stories of this work. Um, I think it can be really powerful to see all of that in one canvas um, and to highlight um, some of the thoughts that, um, people are sharing around irreconcilable spaces. So I thank you for inviting me to bring graphic recording into this space. Um, throughout, I'm gonna be weaving together a visual story of your work. Um, and I am excited to share uh, near the end, some of the choices about why I chose to draw what I drew. And with that, I will check. That's the end of my chicken. So I think Landon, if you're up for it, um, we would have you go next and then Jill finish us off with the introductions. Hi everyone, my name is Landon. Sorry, the interviewer's just checking to make sure her sound was on. Um, there's no pronouns used in the deaf culture, so instead we usually describe what the person looks like because it's a visual language. Um, so I'm wearing a dark shirt with rhinestones uh, in, the, in a checkered, and it's uh, tactile. 
Uh, you can't see how shiny it is on the camera, but it is very shiny, especially when the sun hits it. Uh, otherwise, it's a black shirt with rhinestones on it. You can see that uh, I've been, I look tired. I've been, been very busy and lots of meetings trying to develop projects. And I have a Zoom exhaustion, <laughs> Zoom fatigue for sure, pretty bad. My eyes are aching from having to stare at a screen all day. My access needs are met having an interpreter today, Brooke and Ava here with us to interpret for you. My work uh, typically focuses on deaf theater and sign language art. A lot of people are unsure what the two are, and they really are separate worlds. And the approach to them are different as well. They cannot be overlapped. For sign language art, uh, that's something I'm really keen on. Oh, uh, next piece here. Yeah, I think that's everything for me. Check. Hi, uh, it's Jill here. Will we be um, uh, breaking after this or should I just begin to launch in? I'm seeing a nod from Tara. Okay, so I'll just uh, do my little uh, land acknowledgement thingy, uh, my, my introduction and, uh, and, then, uh, and then give it away. I won't go on. So, Anin, bonjour. Skeno, quick, quick. Jill Carter Nadishnikas, Anishnabe, Kaya Ashkenazi Kwayandao, Toronto Nadunjaba. So I'm speaking to you from um, what is commonly known as Tirana, Toronto, Ontario. This is a city located on the banks of Ontario, the beautiful lake, Ontario. Dagaranto, this place where the trees grow out of the water has sustained and been stewarded for thousands upon thousands of years by the Iri, by the Peitun, by the Wendat, by the Haudenosaunee, by the Mishisagik Anishnabek or Mississauga Anishnabek, Mississaugas of the credit. My pronouns are she and her. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Um, I am, uh, I have a virtual background behind me. Uh, it's a very scary, gloomy looking virtual background. <laughs> it's a uh, kind of gothic, a stony. It is a photograph. Uh, it is a photograph I took of the entrance of Heart House Theater, which I'll be discussing in my, uh, thing and it's actually a photograph of part of it, the installation so this is where the aud audience would enter in they'd go down the set of stairs into the stone building which looks very much like a penitentiary and or it's been observed a residential school <laughs> um, uh, uh, the banner which is part of our installation that hangs over the entrance of the door uh, reminds patrons reminds us all that uh, um, that uh, of the potlatch ban, which was uh, an, an amendment to the Indian Act uh, of eight, uh, the, the Indian Act in Canada uh, was first uh, put into legislation in 1876, but in 1884, an amendment prohibited ceremonial performance. It silenced our songs, prohibited our dances and storytelling and the wearing of regalia until 1951. So uh, this was part of an installation that I'll be referring to when I talk about process. Um, me, what do I look like here and now? Oh, scary, very tired looking, <laughs> very worn and bedraggled. Brown hair, brown eyes, light brown skin. I think uh, hair in a... <laughs> Hair in the one style I can manage, which is a top knot, tight top knot with a hot pink scrunchie. Um, my shirt is a navy blue, black and white, kind of done in a tie-dye-ish, stripey tie-dye-ish design. It's v-necked. Um, and I'm wearing 
big gigantic glasses with black frames. My access needs are uh, so far so good. I am recovering from a lung infection, so I may be coughing um, in the most unattractive way, as I've been doing for some time now. Uh, I'm a little tired, but I will be swigging plenty of caffeinated sugary fluids. Um, so perhaps too, I should also welcome any interruption to slow down. <laughs> and I think that's all I will say for now. Check. Thank you, everyone. Mado. Um, so it is currently 6.11 p.m. Central Time, 4.11 p.m. East uh, Pacific Time, Mass on the East Coast. Anyway, so we are going to take a 10 minute break. And so we will all convene at 22 after the hour. Um, so I will see everyone and we will be together virtually in 10 minutes. Remember that's 22 after the hour. 422, 622, 722. Thank you. Mia, I just wanted to confirm for you that I did get the PDF from Jill. I, I don't know if you're still there, Jill. I did get it from you. Um, and so that's ready to go. Grant, if you're still there, would you be able to share our break screen? I don't think I have it, but you, I, can, you... I can send you the link to it. Great. Yes, I can. Thank you. I will do that now. I'm just going to put something up while I wait for that. Um, I've just sent it to you in our chat, Grant. It is opening up as we speak. I think we're on a 10 minute break. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Oh no, where'd that go?
All right, we are slowly making our way back, making sure ASL interpretation is good to go. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Welcome back. And I'm really excited to hand it over to Jill. Check. Give me wits, Tara. Thank you. So um, I'll be talking a little bit um, and then uh, we'll be moving into some uh, prompts that will prompt us in some uh, 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 practical work or a little bit, a taste, micro activations and also discussion. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and we, uh, we absolutely welcome, invite, hope for the participation of, uh, of, of all you wonderful people whom we can't see or hear right now. I believe you are able to access chat. I believe, I don't know, or uh, there, there are uh, email, etc. cetera. So um, there will be pe uh, people uh, moderate, or, you know, moderating that, looking over that, and hopefully we can bring some of your uh, responses into, into uh, the discussion and the sharing today. So, um, Okay, throughout this series, the members of the uh, Unsettling Dramaturgy we have been putting our minds together to collaboratively imagine a future within the world of drama, theater, and performing arts. A future that we would like to inhabit. And I am very grateful to them for opening this space within this series to talk about and play within a process or more accurately, a devised process that is still in progress through which I have been attempting with my own students and colleagues in Dagaranto to begin to imagine relational repair and conciliation. The nation in which I uh, live that calls itself Canada has branded this fraught historical moment an era of truth and reconciliation between indigenous peoples and the settlers who now occupy our lands. It seems to me and my colleagues in this working group have supported this notion that reconciliation is a chimeric goal. Together, we acknowledge that this reconciliation is an unachievable goal because as Métis curator David Garneau has rightly observed, for reconciliation to occur, there must have at one time existed a respectful relationship that now marred by a breach is in need of repair. We acknowledge sadly that in most circumstances, the occupiers of Turtle Island did not treat, make treaty with, treat with indigenous peoples in good faith and did not meet indigenous peoples with genuine goodwill. And we posit that while conciliation, the forging of right and respectful relationships between indigenous and settler communities may yet be possible, they will require a retreat on both sides into what David Garneau has termed, quote, irreconcilable spaces of aboriginality. Hence, we devote this final session in our series, and we're hoping it's not the final. I think it was scheduled as final, but we're hoping to add a few more sessions, so I shouldn't have called it final. I'll call it the fourth session in our series to the topic of irreconcilable spaces and irreconcilable spaces within the context of virtual collaboration. In his essay, Imaginary Spaces of, of Conciliation and Reconciliation, Art, Curation and Healing, David Garneau looks at Indigenous refusal and quote, outlines how Indigenous resistance to the reconciliatory gaze can inform the development of sovereign display territories, unquote. The creation of such sovereign display territories are necessary to the formation of generative Indigenous, non-Indigenous collaborations. Whether we are collaborating as an artistic team or whether we are collaborating in the moment of performance as storyteller and witness. 
Within the space of, ga of a gallery, for instance, sovereign display territory, at least for me, is easily imagined. I imagine it perhaps as a room or a nook or a curtained off alcove to which only indigenous patrons may gain access. Within the space of a book or journal, as Stolo scholar Dylan Robinson has demonstrated, non-Indigenous readers may be advised to stop reading at a certain point and invited to begin reading again at a later point in the essay. See his, uh, uh, if you're interested, we can send you, uh, send you uh, 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 the, the, the title and bio bibliographic information for a prize-winning essay he wrote called Welcoming Sovereignty. And it's Dylan Robinson. Um, I am a theater I am a theater worker by trade, as both researcher and practitioner, and I am a very particular theater worker. I'm an urban Anishinaabekwe whose praxis and passions lie in exploring the operationalization of nation-specific indigenous knowledge systems, linguistic structures, and aesthetic principles within the crafting of contemporary indigenous performative events. The works that I make or in which I am involved or that I have been privileged to explore fly in the face of accepted conventions of theater making as taught in North American conservatories or as practiced on the public stage. For instance, as a director, I may not hold auditions. Indeed, for the last planned production at which uh, I, I Oh, sorry. For instance, as a uh, uh, for indeed for the last show I produced, I simply set out sent out an invitation to an information session about a planned production, at which I outlined the spirit and intent of the project, the process that would guide us, the commitment of time and energy that would be required, and the positions that need to be filled. Those who showed up, and there were a lot, were then asked to outline their reasons for wishing to participate in the project and to tell me how they wish to be involved. Each person, every single person there who attended that session was ultimately assigned to the role or roles they had chosen and all excelled in their positions and all were paid. Many of the themes that preoccupy me and my colleagues and that occupy our work include questions around narrative authority, cultural fragmentation and restoration, loss and exile, the devastation of the natural world, futurity and the, cycle of un and the cyclical unfolding of life. We seek also to structure our creative processes around the aesthetic principles and traditional knowledge systems belonging to our nations and that constitute a bundle that has been left to us or, and left for us to tend to for coming generations. In fall 2019, Hart House Theater, before which I sit <laughs> virtually, <laughs> which is located on the St. George, George campus of the University of Toronto, celebrated its centenary for 100 years Hart House Theatre had contributed to the development of the storytellers and to the dissemination of the stories that have upheld the Canadian imaginary. Hart House Theatre is Canadian theatre before Canadian theatre could be said to exist. It is the birthing ground of the Shatners, the Masseys, the actors and directors who then went on to to build Stratford, Shaw, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the drama program in which I work now at University of Toronto. It has played a significant role in the shaping of the identity of this nation, of the nation of Canada. To mark this historical moment, even as it looks forward to a second century of seasons, Hart House Theatre reached out to me first for suggestions and later for help in producing its first Indigenous show as an intervention through which to its first, <laughs> just got to stress that, uh, as an intervention through which to commit itself to the urgent project of restoring its role as a cultural cornerstone in the colonial edifice that contains us all. Entering, <coughs> excuse me, 
entering this project, I was wrestling with a tangle of questions, which boil down to these. What dramaturgical methods might I safely employ to safely navigate the frontier between witness and voyeur? How might I ensure that the indigenous bodies on that stage were not performing as fodder for colonial consumption? How might I ensure that the burdensome work of relationship building was shared equitably between indigenous and non-indigenous company members and ultimately between storytellers and witnesses alike? To what extent would the specifically indigenous methodologies and dramaturgical structures with which I had chosen to work serve the project of relationship building in this historical moment? The process of building this show encounters at the edge of the woods carried its participants into spaces in which they were compelled to see, to remember, and to respond to a tangled, tangled history of settlement, to long suppressed histories, buried waterways, silenced voices, and wounded earth. In the beginning, I had envisioned us doing this work together, always together. But during the year, as I prepared for rehearsals, I began to wonder if this was not a naive impulse. I wanted the relationships that came out of this process to be truthful. I hoped that each individual in the company, including myself, would be in some way transformed by the experience. And for these goals to be achieved, absolute honesty was required. Indigenous participants and settlers alike needed to be able to speak hard truths, to engage in hard conversations, to wrestle together with our fears, our hopes, and our most cherished biases and assumptions. In the words of one of my settler actors, during early discussions in irreconcilable space, if you can't find a safe space, Carve yourself a brave space. Bravery would be required if we were to break the dam together. But enforcing a premature togetherness, I could either be courting dysfunction and microaggression or a politely false and distinctly Canadian encounter in which any possibility of authentic relations would be lost. So then from the beginning, a courageous group of scholar artists, the collective, which call themselves the Collective Encounter, agreed to retreat into the irreconcilable space as I carved out in order to build something special together. Early discussions and table work were conducted in irreconcilable space. And I wanna stop here because when I speak of this, I'm actually speaking of a very crude rendering of irreconcilable space because I was beginning a process and it really was a division of indigenous to this territory, to Turtle Island, and, uh, and actually to Canada, and settler. So these were the two spaces I carved out. Throughout the process, I've come to realize or come to think about and want to work with other uh, carving out even finer, finer spaces. Indigenous to other territories in the world who have come here and settled in, well, here, meaning <laughs> Doug Adonto in my case, um, uh, 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 various, uh, various uh, na uh, peoples and nations uh, who have been, who have been affected by the colonial project and to carve out all these spaces and bring them together. But I began in, you know, I will confess in a crude manner and I've been learning through the process. So this is a process in development. So early discussions and table work were conducted in irreconcilable space, wherein each group, indigenous and settler, and each individual in that group were able to reg re wrestle with their biases, assumptions, suppressed anger, fear, distrust, desire, etc. All of these came out in our group work. Each group was able to formulate questions, hypothesize possible futures, process individual and shared trauma, and do the work each needed to do before encountering each other as collaborators. Land-based work was also conducted in irreconcilable space. Each group embarked upon separate Indigenous history uh, tours of the campus, 
upon which Harthouse Theatre sits, and I want to share some teachings I got from those. As the land was storied for them, they responded in kind with stories, songs, spoken word, etc. As a sidebar, I'd like to give you a teaching that I came out with. So I conducted these tours and I conduct many in Indigenous history tours uh, across Dagaranto and on my campus. Generally, although I often feel rushed, these tours run three hours, they're walking tours. When I took the Indigenous group out on the land and allowed them to set the pace, we were out there for over five hours. They sat with the land, reflecting on the stories, responding in the moment. And when I took the non-Indigenous group out, our tour lasted three hours. The Indigenous artists, the non-Indigenous artists, I should say, have beautiful spirits, good intentions, and they listened intently. They connected with those stories, facts and events about place. But they don't yet have, or I believe, that at that time I did not yet, was not yet able to see connections, their connections to the land itself. They listened and responded to my voice. Where indigenous artists listen to my voice, yes, but to the land itself. When they responded, the indigenous uh, 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 artists were, were responding to the buried waters, to the scarred land, to the messages beyond human hearing. They set the pace. They sat with what they heard and they responded to that what they were hearing, not necessarily to me. Had both groups traveled together, I surmise, had I not broken them, broken these tours and broken them, I surmise that the indigenous artists would have felt and responded to the need of the non-indigenous artists to move on, to get to the next place. And I surmise the tour would have been shorter. And I further surmise that the indigenous artists would have gone through this unconsciously and without rancor, but something really deep and important would have been lost. Lee Merico, a Stolo writer and a teacher educator in Siam, uh, and her daughter Kalumpa Bop offered workshops in story creation based on processes they grew up with in their Stolo culture. These two were conducted in irreconcilable space. Everybody got the same workshops, but separately, in separate space. Indigenous workshops, non-Indigenous workshops, and eventually we all came together and did a lot of uh, weaving of story. Uh, and through this, we discovered, but by separating the groups, we discovered the heart of the play, which lay in the Indigenous call, a call or a prompt to which the non-Indigenous artists were tasked to respond. What was happening that through this work, the Indigenous, many of whom were not, quote, professional performers, were storytellers in their own right, were, were amazing artists, but who had come to this process and may have sat back or, or may have given the floor to the, quote, actors in the group. Um, uh, but in separating us that way, our voices were, the, their voices were able to come through, their aesthetics were privileged, and they became the fulcrum of the show. From Lee, I received an important teaching about irreconcilable space, another important teaching, unexpected. When I was asked to do this work months before, I had a long discussion with the Hart House executive about smudging. I was assured that the company members would be able to smudge anywhere at all at any time within that building. This was important because we didn't have the theater space for many rehearsals. Our rehearsals moved frequently from space to space within that building and actually beyond that building. So this was important to have this free reign. But when rehearsals began months later, we were suddenly presented with a book of smudging protocols <laughs> by the administration. When we could smudge, where we could smudge, what windows had to be open, literally down to the east end of the room, the west end of the room, or not at all in some rooms. I was perturbed and confused and angry. Lee Miracle, however, flipped the script. 
she told us that Hart House Theatre, Hart House itself, was not a place we should smudge. She drew an edge of the woods for us, which we realized somatically. She told us that this was a colonial space on Indigenous land, to be sure. Well, she reminded us of this. <laughs> on Indigenous land, to be sure, but still a colonial space. She carved out an edge of the wood ceremony, bringing in an Anishinaabe healer to smudge the company outside the building. And so afterwards to enter the workspace. And after that evening, that, that, that altered or adapted edge of the woods, we, 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 we then um, smudged within the building, the company smudge in accordance, of course, with building protocols, <laughs> which, uh, which I hope are changing after some discussions I've had. Uh, the script was flipped again. And I keep saying using this, a flip the script, because this was a big uh, objective that came out in indigenous discussions about what this show would be to flip the script. So the script was flipped again when irreconcilable spaces were collapsed into a collective working space when we did come together. And again, I invite you to consider that the men, most of the indigenous, all of the indigenous, well, we had elders in the group who are also part of the U of T community, but who might not have considered themselves actors. We had indigenous actors in the group who weren't part of U of T, who had attended, for instance, the Center for Indigenous Theater, who had never been invited to do a show or participate in an acting program at U of T, um, and who felt, you know, outside to these spaces, right? Maybe not even welcomed within these spaces. And then we had many of the non-indigenous were U of T students. And or uh, and many of them were also acting students, performing theater students within the acting programs at U of T. So this was their kind of space, home territory, right? So we flipped the script because upon this stage, the indigenous stood, and we carved another threshold, and the non-indigenous working members came in and announced themselves. They gave us their names. They told us where they had come from and how their families had managed to settle and, and be here. They came, they declared their intentions in being part of this project. And they asked for admittance into this project, not of me, of their indigenous counterparts. And those indigenous counterparts admitted them and then introduced themselves and this is the way we began working together. Indigenous protocols globally have required us to pause in liminal space, never touching that space where water kisses land, never venturing into the clearing beyond the dense forest, never stepping off the tarmac until we have sent out the call, announcing our presence and intentions, and until we have received a response, an invitation to step into the territory of another. Encounters at the edge of the woods and constitutes an invitation to audiences as a show a re, uh, into a requisite protocol, a processual mechanism through which watcher may be transformed into witness, invasive species into distant relation and occupier into guest. Watchers are ushered into a, into a retreat with the company into irreconcilable space, those spaces in which to repair what Stolo writer and scholar Lee Marica terms, terms our split mind, and from which we might re-encounter each other and the biotis that sustain us with generative action powered by good intention. Good intentions, of course, are not enough action is required. And this leads us to the questions that will frame our dialogue and inspire micro activations of this collaborative thought experiment in which we invite all, that is unsettling dramaturgy collaborators whom you see on your screen and you the witnesses to participate. 
it is interesting to me also that I am seeing these spaces spring up and work across Turtle Island. They may not be. Names for these spaces of safety and justice may differ, just as the way these spaces are used may differ. But what stands out to me, what I'm finding is that in a growing number of collaborative projects, a dance of retreat and reintegration as a key driver in the process is becoming more necessary to the health of each project. Those of you who joined us in our last Praxis session will certainly recall Grant Miller's fabulous introduction to threshold practice, again, a space at the edge, right? And chambers into which we could retreat. And in future sessions, I for one look forward to group reflections and discussion around the practice we will look at today, or we will be introduced to, take a glimpse at, uh, through discussion and microactivations, threshold practice, and similar practices across Turtle Island. And so, um, here's what we're going to do. And before we do it, do it <laughs> I will ask my timekeepers, uh, before I introduce what we're doing, I'll ask my timekeepers, where are we in time before our next break? We're about 31 minutes. So we're going to break again at 20 after the hour. Oh, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous. We have a, a fair amount of time. Good. And uh, I, I'll need you to like yell at me, timekeepers. Now I don't need people to slow down, but Jill, keep time. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm terrible with time, but thank you. This is very good. So we can just jump into our first prompting. Um, ah, somebody wrote on a chat. Is that okay if I say this, Lindsay, uh, your question? Uh, uh, sorry, I believe it was invasive species to distant relation. That is true. I was trying to, uh, I hope my wording is, sometimes my, art, my articulation is going very slowly now too, but I guess I'm thinking, of, I'm using the plant species metaphor, um, but I'm speaking about people. So often, you know, invader, you know, when we speak of plants, sometimes often the, the, the rhetoric has been, um, oh, you know, this is an invasive species. But uh, I, you know, as we, I've been taught and many people, I'm sure in, in indigenous nations have been taught, we're all related and we're all connected. Um, so that even if a seed flies over from across the globe or is carried somehow, um, while in the moment it is perhaps an invasive, or it looks like an invasive species, or we call it that, but it also may simply be a distant relationship whose time in these territories has come. I don't know. I don't presume to know, but uh, I trust my creator. And uh, I don't know. I, I think it just amplified plan. Tiara had had highlighted that as a really beautiful phrase, which also resonated with me for sure. But I just wanted to make sure we had the turn of phrase correct because it was really. Oh. Thank you, thank you, Tiara and uh, and Lindsay, and, and thank you. And it was just happened so happened that I see the chat. If I may miss a chat question, and if it is directed at me, please maybe interrupt to to speak because sometimes I'm not looking at this screen. Yeah, I'm happy um, to keep. I'm happy to keep an eye on that. So. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, real quickly, Jill, if that's all right, as we're yes. in this moment of pause and transition to the next portion, uh, we just want to verbalize and acknowledge that one of our dear collaborators, Carmen, has stepped out from the rest of our call. So in case you are wondering where he went, um, he is taking care of himself as part of his access needs. So with that, I'll hand it back to you, Jill, as we now transition back. Thanks, Chuck. Right. Thank you so much. So um, the good news is you all get a break from listening to me <laughs> momentarily. <laughs> um, and uh, the even better news is I, I think we're going to have some juicy fun here. So of course, some of the things that I've been talking about are things that happened in real time and space, you know, people gathering. And we are gathered here. And then there are a group of uh, <laughs> um, 
there are people we're gathered here and then there are people of course gathered with us whom uh, at least many I and probably all of us can't necessarily see or hear in the moment um, and who we we do invite in, in uh, uh, collaboration and so here we are in our little boxes <laughs> on a virtual space boxes on a screen and we're going to try to do some of this work which of course is long too I mean sessions like this for me you know, uh, you know, for all of us, rehearsal sessions last six to eight hours, you know, so or often maybe with breaks, etc, you know, and taking care of ourselves, but uh, we're, we're trying to move this uh, through fairly quickly in virtual space. So this is also experimental, experimenting with some of these concepts. And, and trying to also bring in praxis in the virtual realm because ultimately I think this whole series is about well how do we do some of our work in the virtual realm so I am again extremely thankful for the opportunity to try to think my way through this stuff because I'm not a virtual chick but I'm going to have to get with the times or, or die with the dinosaurs, I think, I fear. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to fear, I'm just going to uh, try my hardest. So here we go. Um, so what you will see very shortly is a screen, a slide. And on this slide, uh, you will see, it will be a slide rather than our smiley faces. Um, as we, you're not right now, or okay, that's okay too, but uh, we haven't quite retired yet, but yes, uh, we saw the slide momentarily and we'll, it will come back. Um, we are together right now, but we will have an opportunity to try to retire into irreconcilable space, to, to, to stop sharing the space that we're in, our home space, our studio space, for a very brief time, to consider, to set our minds to a question, uh, the first prompt. So uh, I've laid it out thusly. I've laid out the question that the, 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 the group has come up with. And then I've laid out a uh, set to that question, a task, a possible way into the question that we can work on in our, in our space, in our safe space, our chamber, our irreconcilable space. Um, and it's very short time. I'm suggesting, you know, five minutes in which to do this work. So we're not writing a presentation or essay, although we can write. These can be bullet point thoughts. These can be drawings. These can be a, a comic, a graphic. These can be uh, uh, song lyrics, uh, uh, words, a, a word cloud. Um, uh, something that resonates, that prompts with us, that we're, that we're driven to, to offer. And again, I don't offer much thinking space as Lee does not in the beginning of these workshops to force us, you know, to push us uh, to, to work and not to worry, <laughs> work and not worry. Uh -huh. So, uh, and to forgive ourselves. I mean, we can always go back and add it, right? Uh, later. So uh, here's the prompt. In your own, in my own artistic Germany, with what you and I have had to reconcile, I'm just going to say you now, I'm including me in this, but I'll say you, you, the individual you, in your own artistic journey, with what have you had to, quote, reconcile yourself with? Or what irreconcilable event or circumstance or attitude have you encountered that caused some disruption to your work? And I use that word very loosely, to your work, to your practice, to your well-being. What has been the cost? Your task, then, that's the prompt. Your, and this will be up on a slide, so don't worry. And that's all you'll see for five minutes. Your task then will be through the medium of your choosing, and I've laid out 
possibilities. I've missed the audio, but that's another one. Um, a little voice memo tape. Through the medium of your choosing, we invite you to story in any way you wish an irreconcilable moment in your artistic life. This also includes the invitation to story an irreconcilable moment in your experience as a witness or audience member. Perhaps you're thinking about that. Um, and, uh, and I suggested uh, again to work fast to give you a time to digest the prompt and the task, maybe two minutes and then three minutes <laughs> just to uh, just to uh, do some free, free writing, free speaking, free drawing. Uh, and then we will come back and where it seems comfortable, share. The invitation, of course, is wherever you are comfortable. There is an invitation to retreat. The collaborators here whom you see, see on the screen are invited to retreat from the group and work in irreconcilable space simply by switching off our video. And of course, many of us are muted already during the duration of our task. We can, of course, see the see. So the only thing we will see on the screen is the task ahead of us rather than each other. And so we'll feel very private in that moment. Um, we will then uh, cue a return. I mean, I believe I'm not sure, but Mia and others can can tell me this. I believe we've also planned a breakout room for our ASL users, right? No? Okay. Uh, okay. Well, again, if ASL users want to stay on this screen, that's fine too. You know, I mean, it's however, it's whatever we have to work with, you know, however we have to work with. Or if, or if those who like to work with a, somebody, with a, a signer, um, are, are, if those people are comfortable with retreating for a few minutes alone and then coming back with the sign with their with their uh, signer sign partner to then translate what they've said done uh, etc that is also a good way to go it's uh, but I want people to use this in any way possible sorry that's my computer speaking <laughs> to me <laughs> I told you I was bad with time <laughs> um, uh, um, on that note, I can keep the, the five minute time frame if that works for you. Th that's fabulous. Thank yes, thank you. Um, and uh, when we return then, uh, however, from, from this task, from when we return from our task, they'll say, we, will, we are all invited to share and respond. Those who choose not to share at this moment can witness and, and perhaps respond to the and respond if called upon if called themselves if they feel a calling and impetus uh, to, to someone else's sharing. Uh, um, yes, and we'll go from there. We'll just uh, improv improvise from there. So right now it's a sharing. If this were happening and we were weaving this into a show, what would happen is there would come this. Uh, uh, these prompts which come in the way of stories, for instance, I'm not telling them Well, I've told you my story right now, I guess, to try to contextualize, but might come in the way, uh, what the prompt might be a story that I would have told, and then we would have uh, retreated to respond, and then we would have come to back together, share those responses, and then what we would have done is broken into groups and woven, there is a method, uh, gone through a particular process of weaving what each of us had done and then come back and each group would share the weaving and then a greater weaving would occur etc cetera, etc cetera. but um, don't, I'm not sure I didn't think we would have time for all of that right now so we're kind of working in this preliminary way and also working with the questions um, so I will invite my timekeepers to start the clock I will invite the slide to a prompt to Can come I up? make one invitation oh, yes. before the slide comes up? Mm -hmm. um, because this is a prompt and a provocation that's going to be um, 
accessible to everyone tuning in live, as well as those of us who are being tasked in this immediate moment to create something here on this Zoom chat. Um, I want to invite that anybody who is tuning in live, who does create something in response to this prompt, who may want to share it as part of the living archive that we will be creating um, coming out of these practice sessions to feel free to email that whatever format it is, if it's an audio file, if it's a video file, if it's a text file, whatever, uh, to email that to unsettlingdramaturgy at gmail.com. And we won't necessarily be able to address it today, but it's uh, such an incredible opportunity for us to know who is creating alongside of us outside of this um, square of relations, relations here, um, who's tuning in live and to know that um, we really do long for um, to visibilize and to actualize in a in a archival sense, the work that other people are doing um, alongside of us in these sessions. So if you feel so called as to share whatever you create today as a result of these prompts that Jill is giving us, uh, please do send it to unsettlingdramaturgy at gmail.com. Thanks. Perfect. So maybe we'll jump right to the prompt. We'll have five minutes with it. We'll come back for 10 minutes and then go on a break if that works for everyone. Great. Check. I will pull up the slide right now. Is that? This is Grant. Um, I'm, I just want to read the prompt aloud uh, for anybody who is participating but doesn't have access to the slide. Um, I just want to make sure that it's read one more time. Um, is that all right? I can't. Please do, yes. All Thank right. You. Um, prompt one. In your own artistic journey, with what, uh, with what have you had to reconcile yourself? Or what irreconcilable event, circumstance, attitude have you encountered that disrupted your work? What has been the cost? A task through the medium of your choosing, we invite you to story an irreconcilable moment in your artistic life. This also includes an invitation to story an irreconcilable moment in your experience as a witness and audience member. Uh, suggested time five minutes. Um, and when five minutes has totally elapsed, we will all return to the group together. Um, and then uh, for those of you who are witnessing this session, uh, currently inhabit, inhabit sovereign spaces of creation and display, we invite you to participate in this exercise and to share your storied reflections as you are comfortable in the chat or via email. Your voices are crucial to this work.
All right, and I just want to flag it's been five minutes. So to honor the time um, outlined by Jill, I would call folks back in whatever gentle way is possible right now. How are we doing? Um, this is Lindsay, uh, very tender. Um, yeah, check. Thank you. Yeah. This is Tara, very fired up. Mm -hmm. Very hot. Check. Hot. Tender, hot. I'm writing this in the chat. I hear that. Okay. This is grand. I feel my heart beating really quickly. I feel like I just arrived to the precipice. This is Jessica. I feel like I have a, uh, I can't tell if it's hot or cold, like a core, a rod in my chest. Check. Okay, um, does anyone want to expand, share further, offer a piece of writing or a story? This is Lindsay, I can jump in mm -hmm. um, with a small piece of writing. Um, the line drawn, who's worth unworthy, what weapons wielded to cut me away from you, a certain wound, both hidden, unsought, and ever tender. The cost has been most of my whole world, the work of discovering another world underneath. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Is there, is there any context you feel safe in offering here or not? No. Okay. No, although I, I mean, if we didn't have an audience, I would. So it's a yeah. particular. <gasps> ah. And I wonder about how what I composed would have shifted um, in different contexts, depending on who was receiving it. So. Mm hmm. Okay. Check. This is Tara. I'll share. Um, so this was from yesterday. And I don't mind sharing that publicly. So for those of you who I spoke to yesterday who are tuning in, you can figure out if I'm talking about you. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not. Anyway, so uh, the little bit of writing that I'll share is settler violence, settler suppression, settler handholding, settler niceties at the expense of whom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the hot, hot take. Check. Good. Do you feel uh, any safety here in maybe not, maybe if not speaking about a, the particular event of particular event, speaking, um, offering us a little more context about what settler handholding looks like, what suppression has looked like, um, et cetera. For you, I could certainly share, <laughs> but, but it's not my time on the floor. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, so speaking generally, uh, because yesterday was no new thing, um, 
is whenever there is conflict that needs to be addressed that is rooted in white supremacy or white fragility, those things of that, et cetera, um, and we need to have conversations of it, in my experience, it's been very difficult to address the issue straightforward without it being weaponized in a settler way uh, back at. And so not just yesterday, but previous experiences, seeing not just the indigenous folks in the room, but also all of BIPOC people, and how exhausted we've collectively felt after these quote unquote honest discussions, because it is impossible to be honest in a space that is still not conciled. So we can't even get to re-reconcile, like That's reconciled. But yeah, so that's what I think of the settler suppression because we're suppressing our own honesties and ability to be fully present. Whenever I think of settler niceties, it's because it's to um, soften the quote unquote blow, which I also don't like to use because it's very like aggressive imagery um, and, you know, save face. So we like to say in the US South where I'm from um, to, you know, take care of the emotional needs of those who are active in said violence. Um, yes, and then having, and then with hand-holding, um, being very much as we have these discussions, since there's such a knowledge gap and barrier, um, it takes a lot of educational work on behalf of those who are having to do said education and work, um, that again, it then becomes impossible to be there fully and honestly and express what needs to be said. From mm -hmm. my humble opinion as one person. Check. Same like what? Thank you. Okay. Can you share something? Oh, do we want to move on? Um, just a few words. Before the rupture outward, before the weight of past, present need request way like sticky gossamer weaving its way around my teeth, splaying and twisting an undesired mirror, the bones of the structure that hold us in, the containment, the tight lips, the face in neutral, the veritable death of self therein demanded, before this welcome, useful, and then. Ellipses. Beautiful. Um, Just real quick, this is Jessica. I I drew this. And oh. it is a series of um, can, like circles winding in opposite directions with arrows that are going in different directions. And some of the circles are inside the other circles, and then some of them are outside the circle. Check. Ah, think what? Think what? Be interesting to embody that image, right? To work with what is it to embody that image? I, we could do that <laughs> next session. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, anybody, I, I think, you know, I don't want to call on names, but is there anybody else? I believe. I think my timekeepers will want me to go on a break, want us to take a break in two minutes, one, two minutes. So um, yeah, whoever goes now, I, I wouldn't mind going before the break, taking the break and then coming back and moving into the next session. And we will be building on this stuff. So please don't throw away your words or anything. And I, I, I typed your things into the chat and I'll just keep sort of typing these first impressions and we'll see we put everything together, what comes out? We're dramaturging. <laughs> um, Sorry. Yeah. So I can go real quickly if you don't mind. I was really not feeling like I could manage to draw or write anything coherent. So I chose a photo and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but basically there are a set of stairs leading to a fence around a home. And um, 
because there are stairs I cannot even get close to home. And sometimes that's how I feel in like ableist rehearsals where I, my identity has to be left a distance because I just don't fit into that world. So that's my contribution. <laughs> Oh, T. McWatch, thank you. Thank you. What a resonant photo. Um, this is Grant. Um, I, uh, um, I sort of feel like just responding to this by moving. Um, and I also want to, just because of time, and I feel like I'll There'll be more space later, but I just, I feel like there's like this pressing and holding into my hands and then this sort of dizzy feeling. <sighs> and then I feel sort of space between my hands as they kind of move apart from one another um, and then my fingers sort of wiggle as though what they were holding has some space to, um, oh, like Jessica's image, have water pass through. Um, um, and yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say for now. I just, I, well, this, uh, there were a lot of moments of uh, just reflecting so much on past experience that there was an aspect of really remembering those times um, in a way that occupied a lot of my storying time. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just really felt all those moments in a way that was somewhat like difficult to, to um, craft linguistically. Um, so, yeah, thank you. So I guess break time now. Okay, I'll take it. I was seeing if Lindsay, if you wanted to jump in. <laughs> All right, so it is 23 after your hour. We will return at 33 after, uh, 34, my bad, after. We'll come back at 34 after. Um, so 8.34 p.m., 7.34 p.m., 5.34, nope, that's not right. Um, is it right? 5.34 p.m., thank you, my Pacific Coast friends. Um, and then we will continue. So 34 after, thank you. Unsettling Dramaturgy is on a 10 minute break. We will return at about 8.34 p.m. Eastern, 5.34 p.m. Pacific. Take a break, get some water, move around, do what you need to do. Crip time, y'all. Have a question, comment, or reflection, or a contribution uh, to uh, what was shared previously. Uh, email unsettlingdramaturgy at gmail.com. Um, comment. Uh, on Facebook at facebook.com slash unsettling dash dramaturgy dash crip dash indigenous dash dramaturgies dash uh, and then this is a sequence of numbers one zero three six six five six one one two seven, nine, six, seven, four.
We have two minutes, everyone, two minutes until we're back from our break. We are back everyone from our break, but we'll wait for everyone to get settled, our ASL interpretation to get back up and they'll be ready to pop on in. Thank you, Jen. Great, thank you. All right, Jill, ready to take it back away. Okay, before we move into the uh, second uh, uh, prompt and exercise, uh, uh, I wanna say a couple of things. First thing is, is well, this next prompt will also take place in irreconcilable space. Um, uh, it will be a different prompt and a different task building upon what you've already done. Um, uh, uh, that was the first thing, but then we will also be having prompts where it's just group discussion after that. So um, we're kind of mixing it up a little bit between uh, dialogue and, um, and, and this type of work. And perhaps this is also the work um, that is also helping us to prompt more dialogue. I just wanted to say though, listening to all of you, like hearing you, and thinking about my own reactions when I settled myself into irreconcilable space <laughs> um, to think about these things. Um, it really hit me. I mean, you know, when you're alone and I was alone for my five minutes, uh, I, this was my experience. But then when I heard you, Tara, particularly you talking, Grant talking, and of course, uh, and um, Andrea and uh, and then Mia's uh, Mia's sort of response, you know, as uh, uh, more than explication, but the you know the pain is a you know the difficulty of this work is apparent. To get honest, to get real, to dive down in the mucky stuff, you know, sometimes we draw a little blood with that, and that's a hard. You know, I mean, I feel bad, like, you know, right now as the quote <laughs> facilitator or as an educator, I sometimes feel quite, hor you know, guilt or director, you know, that's hard. Oh, I'm, you know, asking people to go. But in these spaces then where it can be said, you know, I think this is one reason for me that the irreconcilable space is so necessary. That you don't have to see the shame written on my face as a memory hits me. I mean, if I want to share that later, if that's something that will come into my work that I process and then I'm ready to bring into a public place, I will. Or you don't have to, uh, yeah, 
we can go into these spaces and we can say, you know what, I just reject this for now. Uh, it's not safe for me to go here. So I'm not going to go here. And I'm going to come back and say, I didn't go there today, maybe tomorrow. Right. Which is really interesting. And in other, you know, when we look at other uh, 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 forums, whether we're in rehearsal, I mean, in so many places I've been in, I've been pushed into those spaces. Uh, I didn't want to go because if you're a professional <laughs> and an artist, you will go there. Uh, not when you're ready, but when I'm ready, <laughs> right? Um, so this is, a, I think, you know, this is a, it's a hard way. There's no, no two ways about it, but it's a gentler way and perhaps a safer way. And of course, it's a raw way right now, looking for a be even better ways. Um, I think when I, as I, and this just sort of really came to me as, as we were working through this, and I'm going to be very quick with these comments before moving on. But as we, as you were speaking and I was listening, I was also in the back of my mind, there was the earth diver story running through my mind. Um, so this is a, well, it's a part of the Haudenosaunee creation story about a woman who falls from a world not like on our, uh, not unlike the world we live in today. I mean, earth and trees, I mean, not unlike that, uh, dry land plus water, but she falls to this earth. And when she falls to this earth, a land-based creature as she is, um, she falls to a water world. And she and a turtle, you know, I, the turtle gives his back, and then there there is an earth diver story. There are all these animals who must dive to find some soil, to populate that shell, that turtle shell with soil, so that growth, so that plants, and uh, land land based creatures can uh, also survive, and so that she can survive. Right? It's a story that teaches us to be good hosts, I think, and a story that teaches us to be good guests. But there's also an Anishinaabe um, women think when I that's when I think of the Anishinaabe recreation story, which is the same sort of earth diverse story. Um, and it's a story that takes place during the great flood, the, the, the world being flooded. And it's all Nanabojo's fault. Uh, he's pissed off some powerful entities <laughs> he she is pissed off some powerful entities and uh and uh and uh so to destroy this this disruptor <laughs> they send the waters <laughs> and the waters come and come and come and there is a flood on all the earth and that uh, that old nanabojo grabs a log gets uh, gets atop a log and a few other little creatures, bedraggled little creatures are clinging to the log with, <laughs> you know, right alongside. And, uh, and then, you know, the rain stop and there they are floating in another water world. <sighs> Silly old Nanabojo. And so what Nanabojo does, being Nanabojo, he doesn't do it himself they don't do it themselves. Uh, he sends the animals down, one by one. Down they go. This entails, think of this, down into the cold, down into the dark, down into the unknown, to try to grab something the stuff of creation. You don't know if you'll get there. You can't breathe. Many of these animals died. And it was the smallest one, the littlest one, the one they said would never do it, that came up and in some versions of this story, that little muskrat comes up lifeless. But in that little paw is a bit of that soil. 
and the magic can begin, creation can begin again. In other versions of the story and that I heard when I was a child, Muskrat was resuscitated. So there is a happy end there for Muskrat. And either way, there is sacrifice, there is pain, there is the unknown. And you have, we have been diving down, we go into these spaces alone to dive down for that stuff, the stuff of creation, the real stuff, the life stuff. Right. That's what I think. <laughs> and that's what I was thinking anyway. That's how you inspired me here. So our next dive into irreconcilable space, into a chamber. Uh, the question isn't, of course, Grant will put it up for us. But the question, the prompt is, how do we actively make room? for these spaces. We sort of started to see for ourselves some need for spaces, to think about these things, to talk about these things, um, you know, the things with which we've had to reconcile, the things that we say, nope, this is utterly irreconcilable and it must change, um, et cetera, et cetera, identifying those things. So now, whether we're thinking of virtual collaborations, creations, as we're virtually collaborating here, or as we're thinking of uh, collaborations when we meet in person, face to face, how do we actively make room for irreconcilable spaces to form within our projects? These self-determined spaces, we determine them, which honor the distinctions or our group, our group, that uh, we enter that space with determines, and right now it's we individually determining those spaces, which honor the distinctions between and complexities of our identities, which allow us to honor those things, and which allow us to work apart and together with others whose identities and embodiments and histories are closer to our own. So how can we create these spaces? to do this work that you, you, you have already set the tasks and the prompts for some work we can do. How do we create the spaces in which we can all get together and do that work? Uh, so the question as it's been worded for us here will be set up. Again, we invite you to imagine, uh, to, to go into your space and then imagine the formation of this space, to imagine perhaps an activity that takes place within it. So I'm, so within the activity that I propose, which is very much like, which is the activity we proposed for the first prompt, I'm asking you to maybe imagine another activity. How do you devise this space? How do you devise protocols for entrance and admittance, et cetera, et cetera. You may devise this space with reference or not, with reference to the irreconcilable moment you have already storied or to a story you have heard here as a response to something you have heard here that is resonating with you now. Um, time allotted. Uh, uh, um, did five work or would you rather have six? Did five seem to work for all of you? Nods, thumbs? Grant, oh, Grant's not with, oh. Oh, I can't see Grant's screen. Grant, can you? I'm sorry, Grant. Is I'm back. Five, oh. Sorry, yeah, my uh, my computer froze. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure five is okay because I think we can afford six. If you want six, it's up to you. Does does it work with the faster time for you? Five, five is good. Five is good. Okay. So I will ask Grant when Grant is ready to uh, 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 put up our screen and our prompt and our task. Thank you. And I'm just going to do a description of what's on the uh, slide for anybody at home. Um, oh, do we need to turn off our videos I, so that this can be seen? I, I, I'm not sure I'm going to do, turn off mine. Um, prompt two, how do we actively make room for irreconcilable spaces to form within our projects 
and self-determined spaces which honor the distinctions between and complexities of our identities and which allow us to speak with others whose identities, embodiments, and histories are closer to our own rather than force collaboration across communities. Task, we, invi uh, we invite you again through the medium of your choosing to imagine one such space and one activity uh, that takes place in it. You may devise this space with reference to the irreconcilable moment you have already storied or to a story you have heard here that is resonating with you. Um, suggest a time five minutes. When our five minutes has elapsed, we will indicate our return to the group by switching on our video and returning to the discussion to share. Those of you who are witnessing the session uh, currently inhabit, inhabit sovereign spaces of creation and display. We invite you to participate in this exercise and to share your storied reflections as you are comfortable in the chat or via email. Your voices are crucial to this work. Two minutes left, everyone, about two minutes. We have reached the end of our five minute time. Oh, 
Okay, hey, good. Are we back? Are we met? Yeah. I'm wondering if we can just have a quick connection about making sure we have time for TRA to share on their work and also just for a quick closing. Um, so that might mean this this part of the process taking a relatively short period of time if, if folks are okay with that. Yes, I, I think so. Um, uh, why don't we do our sharing? I, my suggestion is we do our sharing here for this section, uh, and uh, and uh, um, and then if we have some time to discuss a third prompt, it won't be in a reconcilable space. It'll be a group discussion. We'll take that time and cut the conversation when it's time to move to Thierry and closing. But if not then maybe we can move immediately after the sharing. It depends how long this will take, I think. So I will, I'm going to leave it to you. Y'all are the bosses, you, Lindsay, Tara, and Mia. You, you, you're gonna tell me, you're gonna say, oh, crap. <laughs> and, uh, and this is how we'll do it because I really am mathematically not inclined. I look at a clock, it means almost nothing to me. Or I look at digital numbers, they mean nothing. <laughs> it's a terrible, I have a terrible reputation for this. So. It's okay, Jill, we have a plan in the comments. We're ready. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, okay, 5.05 and then move, oh, okay. So that would be 9.05 and then move on. Okay, so that according to my clock is nine, uh, Nine minutes, maybe. Okay, so, uh, all right. Th uh, first impressions, maybe before sharing uh, a, a word or a phrase to talk about where you are, to share where, where you are, what you felt or what you feel now. This is grand. Um, I think um, at first, I it, I it took me some time to really like saturate the question to then start to to put things down. Like I I noticed myself really spending a lot of time kind of questioning different components of it, and as I was doing that, I was thinking, I'm sure I would be. I would I I would really enjoy thinking about these questions while laying in a tub, um, like a, a pool with other people, maybe with all of us, um, in a, a way that is not like COVID times, um, and uh, that there would be a space where uh, I could tend to other people. Um, and other people could tend to me while we also just enjoy allowing each other to be comfortable um, in, in the warm tub. Um, and it really, it really relates more to like the feeling state that I, I the, the space of feeling like I can be with other people um, who are like me, um, who, who there are ways to, um, there are ways to connect with, but also be tending to one another um, in an intentional way. Um, especially, yeah, especially to have spaces to be talking about things that feel irreconcilable um, in ways that don't feel possible in spaces um, with, I, I guess in this case, I'm, I, I was specifically thinking of other disabled artists um, or other disabled people. Um, so yeah, I think that's my contribution for this time. Thank you. Oh, oh, one more thing. Um, I I was drawing while I was uh, uh, did the both. Well, I was writing while I was doing both of these, and um, I almost just dropped my computer. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> it's on a very precarious cushion. I, I I can't actually let go of my computer and get my notes. So I'm gonna go on mute and share later um, if there's time. Thank you. Miigwech, Grant. Who's up? Eric, who's up for sharing? 
Um, this is Lindsay, mine's super brief. Um, a, spa a space to sit in witness of grief. Check. This is Tara, mine's also super brief. Um, I'm thinking of a space where we can have the, cho like where we can be a peer rather than the choice is be an educator or be constantly hit with violence. Check. This is Andrea. Um, maybe this is because I'm hungry, but I was thinking of breaking bread and how food always seems to bring people together or at least help them find something to talk about and connect. So that's kind of where I was coming from, starting with the food. This is Jessica. I drew this. It's, uh, it's like a modified Venn diagram, but there's a side with only one dot that's partially in shadow, and then another side that has a lot of dots, and there's the meeting of the dots in between. And I was just thinking of like the presupposition of like to not be alone in order to have irreconcilable space to work with others like us requires others like us working on the projects with us. Check. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not verbally reacting right now um, because I'm typing your great thoughts for that Mia is going to convert to something, a document. Uh, anybody else wish to share? Okay. Um, sorry, I've lost my words now. I love, I mean, these are like, just, there's something so glorious and beautiful, uh, warm and rich and appealing to all of my senses. I too would like to lay in a tub or a pool. <laughs> and, um, and it's uh, interesting that while we need to retreat treat to these spaces of safety, um, we need both. It's all. It's a. It's the dance, right? And I think um, maybe. Let me see. I don't know if I actually have. Uh, question here. No, I don't. But I think I wouldn't mind um, just spending the last couple minutes, four minutes we have together to expand upon this idea of, of the dance. I mean, originally, I think um, some of the notes I wrote to, to Mia uh, were uh, mentioned something and something about mentioned something, but well, how do we know? And I mean, you know, these are things that I'm still wrestling with. I mean, sometimes I think I've got it, you know, in a moment I got that in that moment. Sometimes I think, well, maybe not, or, you know, how do we um, know when, when, when we're ready to come into those spaces together? And it could be, I mean, right now we're kind of, you know, again, this is such sort of a it's sort of a, I don't have the words for it, I'm sorry, but you know, almost like a false construct I'm creating, like 
but it's also maybe part of the new reality for a while with COVID, right? You know, this, we go away alone, we come back and we're together. Um, ultimately, we had been thinking about, you know, maybe uh, for future and, and, you know, Mia brought this up. She would have, you know, Mia, you had said, sorry, I'm speaking for you, Mia. Is that all right about the breakout rooms? Yeah, so Mia, this idea, and I think it's great. It's another way of doing this work, but it would be a later stage where, you know, we start, I think, in our alone, in the isolation, dive deep for yourself. Then we can start to choose those breakout rooms where three of us or six of us are retiring to, you know, a space together to work through something and weave what we've done together and then come back with the group and share those weavings, um, et cetera. But how do we know when? Uh, or what thoughts do we have about that? You know, what, thought, what comes up for you when we think about that dance? When are we ready to come out and meet the other side? <laughs> and what, what is needed is something, what for you do you feel is needed? I mean, I certainly, you know, have shared a, a few, a few, not all, but a few of some of the protocols and things that we were doing and also some discoveries that I was making, um, even in terms of encountering a building, encountering an institution. And having Lee, really, I mean, I am still kind of, you know, well, I get excited, right, about things, but still so flipped out about that teaching you know I thought you know why didn't I see it <laughs> you know but what a way also to frame it because it was so oh we're mad we're sad you know sad and mad <laughs> um, because you you know you we felt lied to like here I still did it's yours smudge wherever whenever you know we brought in the medicines and all of a sudden we have a booklet like it's no i was going to say as thick as your arm which is such a lie it's you know maybe as thick as a finger <laughs> you know but a, quite a sheaf i mean i couldn't keep track of it luckily i had two wonderful stage managers you know i had to say every day okay could you remind us what are the smudging protocols for the room we're in today Oh, the east side of the room, the west side of the room. How many windows have to be open? For how long? Uh, oh, no, we can't smudge in here. Okay, uh, what do we do now? Okay, <laughs> you know, shall we go outside to smudge? How do people feel about? And, you know, I mean, because there was this, you know, of course, this anger that, you know, what the heck, you're on our land, buddy. <laughs> you know? Uh, of course, and the way Lee flipped that, and not in a way, not in a way reconciles yourself to this new colonized reality, but in the way she flipped it and said, well, wait a minute, you know, they're even going to have to earn their right for us to, you know, something has to happen to cleanse this space itself, you know, before we go in and start doing this work. Very I've taken up all of our five minutes. Shit. I'm so sorry. I really do apologize. Thank you for taking up that time. It was, yeah, thank you. Um, at least, I, this is Lindsay. I, I want to say thank you. Um, I'm very happy about that. So, <laughs> check. So this is Tara. Um, we're going to move to Tiare sharing. As you finish up what you're doing, I see what they're doing. Um, but we'll also offer Jill, if it makes you feel better about time. Um, for us Seminoles and Muskogees, time is a relative. So we take care of time like we do our elders and our aunties. And that time needed to be taken care of in that way. So thank you from me, Madeau. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Tiare, who has been working so diligently and beautifully during this conversation. Um, I'm going to turn off my camera. Yes, we're all going to other than, so we can just have our ASL interpreter and TRA. So whenever you are ready. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. sorry. 
noise. Yes, I can hear you. I can um, hear you too. I don't think there's any more echo. Oh. Um, ooh. Is, are you hearing that echo? Yes. 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 You'll need to mute your computer um, in the room. It is muted. Uh, turn down the volume on your computer as well. How's that? I, yeah. That's, That's way better. So sorry about that, everyone. Um, so I'm on Zoom on two screens here so that I can do a Zoom in of what I'm going to be describing. So if you want to, you can pin this um, more close up version. Um, as it will help you to follow along a little bit better. I had to move back to my room because it got incredibly windy outside and my board was gonna blow away. So here we go. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the choices I was making around um, why I drew what I drew because um, yeah, I can provide image to you and I don't want to drone on uh, describing um, everything sequentially so much, but um, here's the large poster. It says irreconcilable spaces in large block letters across the top. And below there's an acknowledgement of irreconcilable spaces of aboriginality being referenced by, referenced by David Garneau. Once again, um, dedicating that first section of the poster to connecting and introductions and I chose to highlight two moments of um, questions that make sort of the introduction more, having more depth um, and about connection. So uh, the question, what is my relationship to the indigenous lands I'm on? And then I also, and that is included with a drawing of a little um, silhouetted figure in a wheelchair. And then below that is, um, the question, how am I, how is my body? Um, accompanied by the question, how can we reshape spaces to allow our bodies to be present? And then there's a figure of a human um, shaded in, and then there's like a half circle cradling that person to sort of depict that person's body being held and comforted with some other circles sort of supporting them. Then I want to go into an image of mountains and a cityscape and some green hills um, with the description here on Turtle Island, which likes to call itself Canada. Um, Occupiers of Turtle Island did not come to Indigenous peoples with goodwill. Therefore, there is not a good relationship to return to, but a need for truth and possible conciliation. Now here I've drawn a, a sort of ghostly looking figure um, with like arms reaching over in this kind of like grabbing way. Um, and then from there, there's like a red ripple or a dark sort of maroon ripple coming out of their hands. Um, I also drew some little um, green, almost virus, Pox there. Um, and I, as I was drawing that image, I was thinking about um, an article I'd seen um, related to some of the first fur trading situations um, in what is called the United States, but um, similar stories of colonization and how there's very blatant documentation of blankets in toxic, like carrying smallpox being distributed to indigenous communities that were not affected yet by the disease. And so that was some of the thought behind that imagery there as I was drawing. And in this section here, um, I have some figures that I haven't yet shaded in with any color, but I intend to. Um, and I put them on the land. I put them up with trees and mountains behind them with the words retreat and reintegration. And there's um, two streams of black ribbon that are 
meant to be water and rivers and sort of they kind of look like they're coming together and joining each other and this was when Jill was telling the story of how um, when Indigenous participants re retreat, eh, when Indigenous participants retreat, we respond to the messages of the land. So I've encircled the messages of the land in a bold green and teal swirl. Um, all of those lines and circles are bringing elements together and energizing and um, trying to sort of like capture that energy of reconnection. Um, then in a, a rectangular box, it says the question, if our first step was on the land together, together being settlers and indigenous people, would our indigenous artists have responded to the drives of the settlers to move on? And the question, where do we start? Indigenous space, um, circle uh, surrounded by its own green circle, and then settlers learning to acknowledge the ways they came to be on this land. Um, then over here, I've drawn that little muskrat from Jill's story, diving, diving deep helping us along the journey of moving from watcher to witness um, or helping settlers, I should say, move from watcher to witness, from invasive to distant relation and from occupier to guest. Um, so the muskrats taking us on that journey um, of connection that will allow deep dives into honest creativity. And so these prompts are meant to Help, help people connect to um, self-determined space to allow that journey to happen. So I've got the two prompts, how have you experienced irreconcilable space in a bold um, raspberry color? And how do we create self-determined space also? And then the image that's taking shape um, that's lightly drawn out in pencil that might be difficult to see, are two faces and the faces are overlapping each other like a Venn diagram. And then I wanted to braid their hair together to show sort of like a kindred spiritness or people whose identities, um, who share identities, embodiments and histories closer to, closer to our own, um, having that space. And it's kind of cool because the image also creates the shape of a heart. Um, and they're sort of holding each other. And that image will be what supports some of the examples people gave of those self-determined spaces. And then in this open corner here is gonna be some of the questions Jill offered around like, where do you find the balance in the dance of um, having, those, um, having those spaces and connecting and collaborating beyond? So we'll be left with that question and that metaphor of a dance. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thierry. Um, I might, uh, we're at 7.16, so I wanna be conscious of when our live stream um, is no longer available to us. Um, and, perhaps suggest, and maybe I can just get like a, an acknowledgement from a couple of folks, whether or not um, following Jill's lead, we, we do our closing in our own irreconcilable spaces. So off video, um, kind of taking lesson from um, the work we've done today and just giving our ourselves the time and space we need to close out without feeling rushed um, to kind of like learn from Tara as well. Um, our, our folks, um, good with that. And I invite the audience to do the same um, work in your own irreconcilable irre spaces. And um, yeah, I'm just really grateful for, for all of you and the learnings. Um, Mia, if you have anything to say to close out. Uh, thank you. Check. Well, just so much gratitude to um, our narrators today, Lindsay, Jessica, Tara, 
for holding the space for us and Jill for your incredible work and sharing with us with such generosity. Um, and we will post a couple of the articles that were referenced by Jill on the Facebook event. So if you're tuning in and you wanted to um, have some of those resources to uh, dive into on your own, uh, they will be there. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Unsettling Dramaturgy. Um, and while initially we thought this would be a four session series, there is a likelihood that we will be um, creating a couple of more events uh, in response to the work that we've already done. Um, so look out for upcoming events from us and thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Great. Did, 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 did.